<sighs> One of the great icons in historic legend. It was the standard of the Roman Legion. It's that pole, often front and center of every legion that you could find. Folded in silver, bronze, or gold. Bronze, silver, or gold. You better order, I guess. It was always had the eagle on top. It was the most defended icon that they carried into battle. Holding the eagle high above the soldier gave them hope, strength, and often encouragement. Many were lost in time, captured by the enemy, either by killing the standard bearer or by otherwise um, being stolen in the middle of the night while the Roman legion slept without guards or other means these would be battle raids and stuff where it was grab snatched and carried away. This would often result in a counter crusade to go find and bring back that standard. An unrecovered covered um, standard was often considered to be disgraceful to the Roman legion, causing it to be disbanded, discredited, and no longer used because their greatest symbol was gone. To carry that standard was one of the greatest honors a Roman legionnaire could have, soldier could have, often covered in the skin of an animal, usually a tiger, a bear, a lion, a leopard, all symbols of strength. It became symbolic of the strength of the legion, and the eagle caused it to soar high in triumph. As battle of the field after battlefield, as the legion marched forward, conquering everything that was in his path. Today we symbolize that with our beliefs, as it's quoted in scripture, the day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and shall mount up in wings as an eagle. We can run and never go tired. We can have prayer and never have faith, faithness in our faith or our belief. Roman Legion symbolics cannot be found these days. Not too many left exist of the countless number of legions that were sent forth. In many parts of the world today, we still see the markings and tracings of these Roman soldiers that came in to the lands. Whether they were regarded on with honor or disrespect, whether or not we liked them or hated them, whether it's symbolic of our, what's the word they use now, colonization, colonization of the various nations. We were divided. Roman, Romans helped us to unite. My French nation, Friends out there, you were divided. So take a look. Former enemies are now your friends. Where two tribes never talked to each other and often warred against each other, they've laid aside their differences and learned how to coexist with each other. Seeing a more common enemy to overcome. We need to set aside our doctrinal differences our wars and quarrels of the past and become more standardized in our faith and belief. Now I'm not talking the unity as found in the World Council of Churches where compromise and doctrine and beliefs is rampant like a cancer growing quickly through the churches. Where they're taking Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism and Islam and mixing into a big cauldron of soup and serving it to the people saying, here, it's very healthy for you. This faith is nothing more than cancer. All the nutrients ironed out of it in a package deal that you are forced or compelled to believe. You will now bow to the state. 
wherever we are in the world today. The stage is set for a one world government and a one world church. Although the idea and concept of being in unity with the brethren is very appealing to us, we have to be able to discern what is the purpose of this unity. Their mind is to no more than control us, what we think, what we believe, how we pray, where we go, what we do. We see a faithless society, and indeed it was recorded in prophecy that many would wax cold and depart from the faith as we saw the times coming. This year alone we have seen the ordination of the high priest in Jerusalem. They're going to build this very shortly and very soon. There's a gentleman also running around the planet, screaming for the Sanhedrin to meet. Many people don't believe that the Sanhedrin exists today, but it does. They don't meet as a body because to meet as a body, they need to have the temple built. That being said, this individual has met with one of the members of the Sanhedrin. So, and he got his blessing. They'll now him as Messiah. Hmm. Good time to wake up. The alarm bells are ringing. We are besieged on all sides by war, famine, plague, and disaster. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are definitely loose. We are seeing storms that have not been measured to. Not more than a decade ago, my alarm bell went off when they changed the Richter scale, the measurement of these storms, the F scale and the R scale of earthquakes, storms, and everything else went from four category five all the way to category ten. This is what they thought was coming down, and indeed we see it coming in less than ten years now. It's been. But we gotta look to the standard. We gotta look to the eagle. We gotta be under the shadow of its wings. Not necessarily the Roman eagle, but we do need the Jewish eagle. We need Yahweh on our side. Above all things, and first and foremost, let us follow after him. As we come to the season here, in conclusion the year, I turned around and saw a remarkable point of my life. In the numbers of factors, I always say when you see it, two, look for the one. In 2021, I pointed out that there were three deuces, three points of unity, where we will be coming together because two is followed by a one. I said if the one's before the two, somewhere in that sequence, it means it's point of division. So if it was 1222, it would be a time of dividing, of scattering, of taking apart because one became two. As we move into the future, we see a rallying call become one. But it is a doctrine of compromise, of faithlessness, of being told what we will and will not do. You, my friends, are being shepherded. You are being herded, and you're being led to slaughter. They have no intention of letting us free. I said that this coronavirus is going to be used to stop international travel, interprovincial travel, or interstate travel, and finally, you won't be allowed to leave the city without a permit. Already, we see denial to buy or sell if you don't have this symbolic health card. We've been here in World War II, the United States, not more, and other areas where soldier passes and times of crisis where these things have come up. This is the first time a global scale push out to have this thing done to us. I don't know if you were paying attention, but they now have ready a biochip would be easier. Hospitals will become a thing of the past. No more overcrowding, no more hits, no more pain, no more things. A doctor can monitor you from a very far remote area. Scan you using this chip. 
and tell you there's something right or wrong with you. You know exactly what all your symptoms are. So you sitting there and going, so what seems to be the matter? If I knew, doctor, I wouldn't be here. Be watchful and prayerful, my friend. Come under the shadow of the wings of the great lustrous eagle, Yahweh himself, Lord of all, Master of all. Return to your faith. Be ready and watchful. Time is short. Merry Christmas to you all. Happy Hanukkah for us who have celebrated. And to all other mornings of celebration of this festival of rites. We will triumph over all if we accept God. To those who do not, you will pass quietly in the night, and the night time comes quickly, and with it comes the cold of winter. Until next time, this is Dan Bowman saying, Shalom, and God bless you.